These lessons are not the ABCs of scripting. They are designed for the intermediate program that is ready to enhance their knowledge and improve their C-sharp skills. Unity Visual Studios These sort of software we'll be using throughout these tutorials. Lessons, course. Here we are in scene one. Throughout this tutorial, we'll be primarily focusing on script and spend as little time as possible in the actual Unity editor. Around lesson three, we'll be set lesson four. Here we are. In lesson six, we'll be adding an animator. We'll spend a lot of time in Unity throughout that tutorial and very little scripting. But other than that, We'll spend a lot of time here in our edit our script editor. As an example, you can see the layout of the structure. Lesson one's only three scripts, whereas lesson ten contains quite a few. And the animator is in lesson six and as you see there's only two scripts. Mono behavior implementation of the input controller oh. and actions to aid the animate the animator perform the right functions. Okay, here we are. This is where we start character controller provided by unity it's a component and add that and a box controller script and a respawn limit script respawn limit y is what's the y limit you reach before respawning to your start position we have a jump speed, gravity, and the movement speed of our character. We undo those. We have one more script we'll be exploring in this lesson, and it's the uh, pickup script. Let's start there as it's most simple. We're organizing all of our data within namespaces. Namespaces are like folders on your machine or project folders in Unity. They help organize your scripts, code, functions, and you know, everything else. Generally, they contain classes. And they can contain other things also, like delegates and structures, enumerations, and there's probably other things that I haven't explored myself. So, we'll be using namespaces to organize our code. In this instance, we have a mono behavior, but we're not using any using statements. We explicitly defi define the namespace we want to use and what classes we want to use within that namespace. As you'll see in other scripts, we use the using statement the Unity engine to use Unity's classes. There's uh, many different ways of doing things. Sometimes in a conflict or redundancy, you'd have to use the explicit implementation instead of explicitly using the mono behavior, for instance. So, if there is a collision or a trigger on this pickup, we're going to test if the other collider has a character controller component on it and that's what we're looking for we're going to destroy the pickup simply enough now let's go on to the other simple component the respawn limit again 
we have our namespace and we're declaring unity engine as in the using clause at the header of the file so we won't have to explicitly call unity engine for all of these components all of these classes that we're that we're using for instance the mono behavior the transform all of these are part of the unity engine this is just a brief overview of what's going on I'm pretty much assuming that everyone that's following this tutorial are up on all of these things it's gonna take off real fast anyway we um, call awake we cache our transform on start we cache our start position and on update we check every frame to see where the player is and if it is at the respawn limit press F12 I can get to the definition we just test for the position against the limit and if that does occur then we'll call respawn again F12 would get me right there and respawn is a simple command just resetting the player's position to where it began when the player is selected will show the respawn limit now if you notice here I have a lot of calls to gizmo color this is recommended if you ever change anything in the editor so I'm changing the color of the gizmo here set it back because there's other calls going to be called to these are static properties so it's used throughout and if you don't set things back you know other calls to this will be using your color for instance so it's always a good idea to set the uh, any properties you change for editor values okay so we're just drawing a cube at our respawn limit by half the cubes height that's just a visual aid so we can see where the player is gonna trigger the respawn and that's that's our respawn limit now for the box controller the box controller itself looks intimidating but it's also very simple it's generally um we say it's basically unity's implementation of the box of their con character controller and um, again I've just in this first lesson showed a lot of stuff that you should already know if you're following along so we set a couple of constants here to record the jump and horizontal movement keys declare a static function protect the modifier so only derived classes can access this function and uh, this function it gets our horizontal input and it returns it returns the value so we have speed gravity jump and uh, private field here for our character controller these are also private fields and this one's public I left it public just to show the differences these will all show up in the inspector serialized field allows for private and public probably inherited not inherited internal members also to show up in the inspector for editing but they're private of course and any class outside the derived hierarchy will not have access to any private variables only protected and internal so here we mo we're moving on we declare another field for our move direction a public accessor to our speed so it can be accessed outside the function outside the class excuse me public accessor for our move direction a setter and a getter so this can be changed outside the class in a wake we grab a reference to our character controller and then we call update 
update checks our ground movement our wall movement and then it updates any changes to our character controller so our character updating our character controller is again this is exactly as is on unity's website we've extracted a lot of the other controls that will need to be changed or modified throughout the hierarchy of this this class's descendants so here we have the update controller which sets our Z on the plane that we will be using applies gravity and then moves the character depending on what the direction says time dot delta time is multiplied by everything to keep consistent um, frames and movements across machines or devices our horizontal movement first we get a move direction that's coming in this is called here and the move direction is from horizontal input the static function we declared above now that it, get, it gets the move direction that's whatever the user is inputting and it does this calculation it transforms the direction from local to world space so our character will move appropriately and it adds the speed that we'll be moving this is our total ground function the controller has a is grounded property on it that we'll be accessing to check if it's grounded this we will be using it throughout the project also we'll be declaring our own is grounded function later to detect for wall jumps is grounded so this is what we've changed in unity's character control we've added a wall jump so if the collision flags are on the sides these collision flags detect wh where the player is colliding from the sides above all none and it's a bit comparison I believe so that's why we compare it to not zero and if it is not zero then that means that you do have a coll collision on the sides so it it bit compares these or bit ends them you know this is beyond my scope of knowledge if that does happen if we are on the walls then we'll be reducing our x speed our x momentum or movement not the speed the input direction what uh, the user is currently inputting will uh, reduce that by a bit every frame and we'll check for jump if we do have a jump we'll use the same jump speed here as the ground jump and we'll change the direction of our movement so if it hit a left wall it would turn right and vice versa let me save these changes here okay that those are the scripts that are in lesson one very simple just to get our feet wet and get us into the the mode of, of object oriented programming maybe uh, let me go through a few of these modifiers protected means only classes that derive can access virtual allows derived classes to override the function and the return type so as you see we have protected field here so only derived classes can access or change this value even if they can access it through this public model public property and they do have a setter a setter will only allow the entire property to be set I could not set move direction dot X to anything outside of this class unless I have access to the actual field 
Okay, so now back to Unity. I don't need to save that. I'm going to undo a couple times back to the previous save state. Okay, so now we are here back in Unity and we see our values. The speed and gravity shows up here even if they're not public in our script because of the attribute serialized field. We have three goals that we can pick up and these come with unity directional light we have a game board that are created from some, from some cubes hidden in this hierarchy and we have our player let's see if I can get all of these in ish usually pretty hard <laughs> all right that's one Oh, actually, I'm going to change the aspect ratio. If we have build for Android, we can uh, use an aspect ratio that's more friendly to Android. So every time I want to jump, I have to press the key, the jump key. Space bar is what the input manager has set. And that's what makes this particular part very difficult. But if you don't mind, I... I would like to get it done. <laughs> In later versions we implement a hold to jump and that made this very easy to accomplish and that's how we improve our scripts as we go. We start and we see what doesn't work and we fix it. So in less than two we would have a better jump controller. Actually I'm going to increase my my jump speed here lessen my gravity just a bit oh, I get a little higher on each jump <laughs> and I can make it to the top so there we have it brief overview of lesson 2 those are the scripts in lesson 2 we'll implement a better box controller an abstract class that encapsulates all the functionality that's basic to the controller. We'll make uh, pushable items and we inherit from our respawn Y limit and add a, a few more fields to it that, that will help us. So, next lesson, better box controller.